destroy you, it's going to take the hit. And what I, as I watch, I watch the men that you have in the ministry. I watch, I watch their, their acuteness. I watch their strength. I watch, I watch their focus. They're, they're so, he told me this morning, I asked him, I said, how, how's the weekend been? And we talked about a couple things. And one comment he said, he said, I've been, I was military 24 years. He said, so in my 24 years, I've learned how to remain focused. So you need people who are focused, not easily distracted. Because if they get distracted in their assignment, then what happens is, is that something can get to him. And although he's made for battle, and he's strong, and he's tough, is still, there's only so many uh, attacks that he can take before he gets taken out. Are you listening to me? There's only so many missiles that can come before he's destroyed. So, so we got to make sure, because we have an assignment at New Covenant, that we are always protecting the battle carrier. Are you listening to me? Because because somebody's life, somebody's destiny is determined upon them. Listen, the battle carrier is not only concerned about the battle carrier, the battle carrier has an assignment in some country in the world to be able to protect the interest of the United States of America. Are you listening to me? And so if you get to the battle carrier, then it has the capacity to destroy somebody else who is depending on the battle carrier's capacity to be able to instruct, to be able to lead operations, to be able to steer clearly, to be able to do all the things that has to be done. So he represents the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you listening to me? And the assignment that New Covenant has. See, New Covenant has an assignment. But in order for us to achieve the assignment, we're going to have to be unified in our faith. Yes. Yes. Now, if the enemy can get to you, then that leaves one flank uncovered. If you if you get to him, another flank is uncovered. If he gets to you, then the rear is uncovered. If you get to him, the front is uncovered. And so what the enemy is going to try to do, and I'm going to show you again when I get into my text. I probably got a little ahead of myself, but I got excited about this theory and this process. But what I, what I understand is if the, if the enemy can get us and separate us from our unity, he can destroy us and he can kill us. Are you listening? Am I right about it? And so as a ministry, as a church, we cannot allow anything to ever get to us to a place where we're number one distracted or number two divided. We got to fight for our unity. We got to protect our unity. We got to at all costs, everything or anything that comes to separate us, we got to destroy it. And that's what the destroyer's assignment is. Anything that comes against the, the assignment of the house. Anything that comes against the assignment and the mission and the mandate. Come on. Anything that comes against that, you got to have your mind so focused. And I'm telling you, we were doing the video this morning. As we were doing the video, we were, we were standing in the office. And so we were in the corner with the video, Apostle. And so as we're standing there, uh, we, we, we were focused on the video. But the reality is, is that his main focus is you. His assignment is, is his battle carrier. And so as we're standing there doing the video, he looked out of the window and we heard a sound. And when he heard that sound, he immediately ran out of the office because he understood he had to protect you. He didn't mince words. He didn't think about it twice. He automatically took off in a sprint to make sure that when, because he saw you coming out of your vehicle, you and your wife, and when he saw that, he knew that his assignment, that he had to get to you as quick as possible and, and make sure that you were safe. Yes. That's his assignment. Yes. 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 Amen. Are you listening to me? Yes. Yes. So I believe that God has assigned men that have this kind of focus. Yes. Because there has got to be a great assignment on this house. Amen. The prophet, I didn't put the prophet out front for nothing. That's right. I put the prophet out front because prophets can see things. Yeah. And they can hear things. Yeah. And they got a direct contact with God. Mm -hmm. that, when, that when God is speaking, they can hear it. Mm -hmm. Come on. Yeah. Come on. And so those of you that are in the house that are prophetically inclined, you got to be so that your radar sees 250 nautical miles in all directions. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. 250 miles in all directions. And I don't care what's coming, you can see it. Yes. And then the destroyer has the capacity. Help me out real quick, and I'm going to get back to the text. The destroyer has the capacity with weapon systems on board that it can destroy anything that gets close to. Yes, sir. Yes. yes. See what I'm saying? So not only are you, are, you, are you in the position that you're in, but you got power. Now, the scripture says that I, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. So you can't just see stuff in the natural. you got to see it in the spirit. That's why your radar. So, so when stealth bombers come in and they're flying in a certain place, your radar still picks up stuff that's invisible to the natural eye. And so, promise, you can't just be in the house 
talking about you with God and you're, you're going through all the motions of being a prophet. No, you got to go through the, have the anointing to be a prophet. Yes. And you can't just diagnose and acknowledge that something is there. What would it be like if you as, 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 a, as, you know, as a destroyer, help me out with this, if, as a destroyer, if you could see something coming but didn't have the power to destroy it? Ah. See, a lot of prophets can see stuff coming, but you got to have the power to destroy what's coming. Because we got to protect this thing. We got we to protect this thing. He represents the assignment. He represents the vision. He represents the mission. He represents all those principles of what God has put in him. Because let me say, there is no one else who has the vision like he has for what God has given him. Are you listening to me? All right, let's give them a hand. I want to get into the text. I look at that man, it's, it's literally impossible yes. for the enemy to destroy us if we don't want to go. Because right. whenever you move, they move. Yes. If you move to the left, everybody else is heading to the left. Yes. If you move to the right, everybody else is heading to the right. Yes. When you pack up and it's time to go home, everybody turns around in formation and we all go home together. Because <laughs> we all want to go. Yes. See, we don't, have a, we don't have individual assignments. All our assignments are around the corporate environment of what we've been called to do. Yes. And I want to show you this morning that it's scripture. So when I look at the scripture, what did I say? We got we to fight to achieve our unity. Number two, we got to fight to protect our unity. Because sometimes it takes us a moment to get unified, yes, to get synchronized. Yes. It's just like soldiers marching. Now, I don't understand. Uh, I don't, are there any army people in the room? I, I, is this one army people? Okay, one army person. Where's the other? Is there somebody else in the army in the room? Okay, you, are you, are you ex-military? Are you ex-army? Okay, can you just come stand for me right here in the middle? Come on, just, just come for me. Come on, uh, come on, Apostle Rick. Just come stand for me in the middle. And I, I, I need some army help because I don't really know Navy commands and Navy formations and all that kind of stuff. But if y'all were standing looking at me and y'all were, uh, y'all would just look at me. And, uh, and so I remember when I was in the army, uh, if, I was, uh, if I was standing before the formation, I would be at attention myself, and then I would give a command. Come there, I can't show. And so they would snap to attention. You see how quickly he snapped to attention? Now it's been a few years. You know we're a little rusty at this. But, but they, they, they would snap to attention. And then they don't have the authority to come off of attention until I release them from being at attention. Does it work the same way in the Navy? Now, I, I don't know. I was an Army drill sergeant. I wasn't a Navy drill instructor. So I, I don't know how it works or, or whatever. But they're standing at a position of attention. Now what I would do is I would say, right face. And then they would turn right. Am I right about it? And then I would say, forward. And so they marched forward. Keep marching, keep marching. Tell them half right, march. And so he, no, 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 that was a, that was a right flank that you did. Come on. So when you got to work with me, y'all, y'all, give me a second to digress. That was, that, that was, that was, that was call them half right. So I went marching, and we go call them half right, march, then I step off like this in this direction, and do it to 45 degree angles. That was the truth, so I had to learn this. Stuff. Well, you better not mess this up this morning. My point is, is that when one is marching, they're marching in step. And you can always tell when you see a column of soldiers when somebody is not in step with everybody else because their stepping pattern is off. Oh and so we got to fight to achieve our unity and be in step. Well, let's try it one more time. Coming at the pinch, huh? Right face. Mark time, march. Left, your left, left, your left. Now, if they in step, you can see it. Left, your left, left, your left, your left, your left right, left. Yo left, yo left. Now I wouldn't make them double time, I won't do them like that. Come there, halt. Dismiss. So anyway, so this is my principle is. My, my principle is, see I, I look at some of this stuff, these military principles. My principle is, is you can always see when somebody is not in alignment with what everybody else is doing. Their foot pattern is off. Their step is off. Right. Their speech is off. Something is off. And so we got to be able to identify as a family when something is off. Yeah. You, you, you spend, how many years have you been in so far? 31. 31 years. So in 31 years, there's some stuff you can see. Other people, civilians may look at it and be like, ah, nothing wrong with that. But you can see, you don't know, something's not right here. And so he's been, you, you guys have been assigned to this unit. Because apostolic and prophetic churches are not just regular churches, yeah. they are military units. They have, they have assignments. And so you guys have been assigned to this unit, and you assigned to be able to see sometimes what other people can't see. My God. 
So you should be able to look through the ranks of the formation and say, okay, that one is not in step. Now either we got to train them to be in step with everybody else, or we got to release them from the assignment. Are you listening? So that's why I said we got to fight. To, we got to fight to achieve unity. Then we have to fight to protect unity, and then we have to fight to maintain the momentum that we have. And then we have to be to be prepared to destroy anything that opposes it. Are you listening? And so when I looked at the text of Scripture, let me give you a few accounts of Scripture that show you that when we come together on one accord, God takes notice and things happen. Right. But I want to show you that there is a significance to our unity. Now I want to show you in Scripture because some of y'all say, man, God, show me that in the Scripture in context. Okay, let's look at Genesis chapter 11, verse number 1. So the whole earth was of one language and one speech. Now, we understand that, uh, I, I'm sure, uh, and this is, this is going to be a tough one. How many people know what a hyperbole of speech is? Anybody, anybody know what a hyperbole of speech is? I see a couple of the college students, they know what hyperbole is. It's an exaggeration of speech, so I won't go too deep into that. But what we know that this was the, the earth that they would have known at their time. Because the reality is there may have been other places that they may not necessarily have had contact with a relationship with. Does that make sense? And so I'm looking at the text. It says the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar. And they dwelt there. And they said one to another, let us go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime had they for mortar. And they said, go to, let us build us a city and a tower whose, whose top might reach under heaven. And let us make us a name lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. Verse 5. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. And the Lord said, behold. Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language, and they have began to do, and no, now nothing. Say nothing. 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 Come on, say nothing. 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 Come on, say it one more time. Nothing. Nothing. Will be restrained from them, for they have imagined to do. Go to, let us go down, and there confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. So there is a military strategy and tactic that I see, and what happens is, is the enemy saw that what God did, and he learned a principle, which is to divide and conquer, which is to divide the language, so we don't all say the same thing, to divide our actions so that we don't all do the same thing, because he understands if he can divide us, he can conquer us, but he didn't learn this from himself, he learned this from a principle that he learned from scripture, and he watched the actions of God, that when God saw people unified, God began to come down and begin to move. When the power of God, and all the people of God come together on one accord, literally nothing that we can that we can imagine cannot be happening. Amen? Amen? And so if we come together on one accord and our goal in this church and this ministry and this assignment is to come together on one accord and make things happen. Are you listening to yes, us? Yes. So we go from there. Let's look at Acts chapter 2 verse number 1. There's another instance. In the first instance, God scrambled their language. In this instance, he unified their language. Are you listening right. to me? And so Acts chapter 2 verse 1, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And what happened? And suddenly. Say suddenly. Suddenly. And suddenly. Come on one more time. Suddenly. There came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And they appeared under them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit of God gave utterance. So I go back again. When Jesus made the statement in Matthew chapter 18, 19, and 20, and he says, he says, and truly I tell you that if two of you shall agree about anything they ask, it will be done for them. For where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am with them. They understood that, and for them, they just took it literally. If God said it, they believed it. They didn't, they didn't, even, they didn't have to think about it twice. No, if God says if we come together on one accord and begin to believe and begin to pray, and we come together and we're gathered in the midst, that and we, in Jesus' name, and when, he, when it happens, there are going to become cataclysmic situations that begin to happen. The power of God, open heavens, the anointing, miracles, signs, wonders begin to happen as we get into that environment where we come together on one accord. Are you listening? So yes. this is why, if this is that important, now we understand why the enemy has tried to divide you from your chief friends, why he's trying to divide churches, why he's trying to divide marriages, why he's trying to uh, divide different assignments. Why? Because he understands if he can take out the destroyers, if he can come against the prophets that are assigned to the house, if he can come against the apostolic vision that's in the house. If he can get your mind so divided 
divided by stress and frustration and all the other things that are going on, then what happens is you can't stay clear to see what your assignment is in the place where you're going. Because you're not, you're not called to just where you are. You're called to the place that you're going. And so if you, in the process, get focused on what's going on over here and what's going on over there, no, that's the destroyer's job. I'm staying focused here. If there's something going on over there, I'm not moving. I'm staying focused because the destroyer's going to take it out over here. If something's going on in the front, the prophet in the front says, listen, I got that. You just And they already have a, what's called a standard operating procedure. See, see the main battle uh, formation doesn't even move. It's just whoever's necessary to take care of it. If it's a far off, there are jets that'll take off and begin to fly to deal with that situation. Come on, intercessors. I need artillery. And so if I need 21 inch guns to deal with something, then I'll start to send the worshipers and I'll send the musicians and I'll begin to send the intercessors. And if that process happens all of a sudden, the fire starts shooting from that place. Come on. And the, and the destroyers are fighting to the left and to the right and to the front and to the back. And because I'm focused, I'm listening. I cannot get off focus. If something needs to be dispatched, all of a sudden one of the aircraft takes off and takes off with the runway and goes to deal with whatever the, the problem is. Because I understand that if anything gets near this destroyer. Oh! So we got to look at this thing different. We thought we were just an average church. Jesus. You just thought your assignment was average. My, my, my. You thought your pastor was just a pastor. Come on. No, 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 no. He has a, he's an apostolic military general yeah. with an assignment yeah. to go throughout the world to defend. Oh, Come on, just as, Come on, just as those aircraft carriers defend the interests of the United States, so an apostle sent to defend the interests of the kingdom of heaven. Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. That's what an apostle is a sent one. Yes. So your church is not just a regular church. Yes. No, it's, it's, and you know, the thing about it is, you know, your name is New Covenant. So you got to have a whole new perspective because there are a lot of other churches. And then, then you're on victory drive. My God. So we get the victory in Christ Jesus through the New Covenant on victory drive. So there's only one victory drive in this city, am I right? Yes. And there's only one new covenant on the street, am I right? Yes. So it's prophetic in its implication. Oh Come on, that the new covenant in Jesus Christ gives us the victory. Jesus. Oh my God. Come on, Jesus. So you gotta even know your name. My God. And then you gotta understand why the warfare came. Understand why the enemy, you talk about how, how there are other nations that are trying to build ships that have the capacity to bring some harm to our ships. The, the enemy is now creating things that he believes will have the capacity to destroy. The, the enemy is now framing stuff and putting stuff together to come against you, but you've got to understand your assignment. You've got to stay focused on your assignment. I don't care what's going on over in the other place, you, you stay focused on your assignment. I don't care what's going on to your left or your right. No, you stay focused on your assignment. Yeah. Our unified faith My and our unified, uh, our just our unity in general My God. is getting ready to produce a suddenly for this ministry. Yeah. It's, let me tell you something. People are going to wonder what in the world just happened. My God. You know, when we were standing in the office and that sound happened, we could hear something like, boom, it went off. We, we heard a sound. Listen, let me tell you something. This city is going to hear a sound. Jesus. That's going to come from this My place. God. This state is going to hear a sound. Come on. Come on. This nation is going to hear a sound. You mean to tell me there are sounds that come from other places? There can't be a sound that comes from here? Come on. It's going to be a, a distinct sound. It's going to be a sound not like any other. You're not going to copy anybody else's sound. It's going to be an original sound. Because God has put something in New Covenant that he has not put in anybody else in the world. You were created unique. There is none other like this church. So you got to protect your identity. Protect your uniqueness. Come on. You gotta protect your unity. Yeah. Come on, the faith that you have together, if you put it together, no weapon can that's formed, no devil in hell, no witch, no warlock, nothing can come against you. Amen. Amen. But you gotta make your mind up today that you're gonna stand. My God. And every destroyer assigned to this church, every every aircraft assigned to this church, every pilot assigned to this church, Come on. every drone assigned to this church. Every satellite assigned to this church. Come on, somebody. 
Come on, everything that's assigned here, you got to make up your mind that you're going to stay focused on the assignment and you won't let one devil in hell that comes to destroy and stop what you've been called to do. No, I see it from afar off. I can see 250 nautical miles. Come on. And a nautical mile is much farther than a square mile. But my God, I see God doing something amazing. Jesus. Come on, you the minstrels. Y'all are not, let me tell you something. Y'all are not just, you're not just in here playing. No, no, no. You you keep the cake, the drummer, you keep the cadence. You, you you keep the cadence for what's going on. The drum major in the band keeps the cadence. You have a you have a significant responsibility. Come on. You 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 play the drum and you keep the beat and you can increase from warfare to intercession to worship. You're the person who helps us to transition from those places. Mistress, you, it's, not, it's not just something you come to do. It's not a gig. It's not something you do to get a paycheck and leave. No, that's not what this is about. No, you're assigned to be here to understand the warfare. And you, you have a duty to say. You have, in the, in the army, we had general orders. I will not leave my assigned post until properly relieved. So when I'm assigned a post, I will not go anywhere. I will die defending what I'm called to defend. I'll die for it. See, there's a, different, there's a different understanding between people that are, that are military. And I don't mean any harm, but there's a different understanding. You can, and then people that are military in ministry, there's a different understanding. I will literally die for my post. Yes. I didn't have a problem. I was prepared any time, any day, any night to die for the country that I believe in. And so I have the same mindset about the kingdom. When it comes to the kingdom, I don't mind dying for what I believe in. I don't believe, I don't mind standing. You, you don't have to pump me and pride me to go to, to stay away in church. Come on, to get the assignment of my apostle. You don't have to pump me and pride me to be here on time. You don't have to pump me and pride me to come and sow into what I believe in. No, I'm not an illegitimate father. I pay child support. Yes. Jesus. So if this baby is going to be born and birthed and do what it's supposed to do, we're going to have to pay for it. And the baby's got more destiny than what we've been putting into it. Our, our, our finances have not been unified. Our efforts have not been unified. Our faith has not been unified. But today we destroy every enemy that comes against our unity. We declare now in the name of Jesus that every demonic principality and every assignment from hell and every devil and every demon and every witch and every warlock and every person that has come to do something against what God has called us to do, we break its power now by the blood of Jesus Christ. And we declare that what God has called for us to do, we will do it, and we will do it with everything we have. We will do it with everything inside of us. We stand to believe you, God. We believe you by faith. We know we've been tried by the fire, and we're coming forth as pure gold. No weapon for the business shall come us. Every time we rise against the judgment, we will utterly condemn it. But this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. Come on, stand on your feet, and put your hands together, and believe God by faith that he's getting ready to do miracles. I've not just been assigned to come and attend the church. No, I've not been assigned to come and attend the church. I've been assigned to come and join a mission. I am on assignment. I have orders from the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. So I don't just come. I don't just. I don't. I don't go on my own wheel. A soldier can't just go on their own wheel. A corporate can't. You can't just. You can't pick up and go when you want to when you want to. No, no, no. When you have an assignment, you go when they call you and they tell you because you're employed by the United States military. United States of America. So when you're on orders, you pick up and you move. You find out what the mission is. What's my assignment, sir? What is it that you want me to accomplish? And once you find that out, you stand and you make it happen. And it doesn't matter what comes against you. It doesn't matter who comes against you. We're prepared to defend our ground. Whatever it takes. Whatever comes against us, we are prepared to feed. Now the interesting thing is, is that assigned to us is all heaven and all earth. Yes, yes, yes. So we're not fighting this thing alone. We are allied nations and countries that are assigned with us. Come on, we got we we, we, we got drones and satellites in the in the air, and literally there's no place that we can't see. Come on, and so you got to understand that your assignment is much bigger in this city and in this region than what you thought. You thought it was just a church. No, 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 it's more than a church. It's more than, it's more than just coming somewhere to just come. It's not, it's not your last church. It's not, it's not your grandmother's church. It's not, it's not the church that you came from that, that lets you just, you can just come and do what you want. No, you got orders. There's discipline, there's structure. Because we're only as unified as we are together. Come on. You think he put you together? 
powerful as you are, as much vision as you have, and then gave me this anointed vessel My God, who stands right beside you. Yes. And her radar goes about 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 a thousand nautical miles. Come on. But she can see stuff that other people can't see. She can look at you and tell whether or not you're in the right alignment. That's why God has made you different. Yeah. And so, and so then, as as the commander of the ship, you gotta make sure that you're listening to your radar. When the radar tells you, uh-uh, there's trouble over there. Come on, there's trouble over there. Come on, then the destroyer, then, then the radar, then the, the same thing that the radar is picking up, the destroyer is seeing. And then they start taking it out. Come on, intercessors. What intercessors? That lift your hands, intercessors. Come on. Come on, I'm deputizing you today in the army of God. That you understand that your assignment is much greater than what you thought it was. Come on, I'm deputizing you today. And I'm commanding you in the name of Jesus that you not leave your post until you've properly been relieved. Come on, you will not let one enemy, one devil, one assignment from hell come into these aisles and destroy anything that God has started. Come on, I don't care what comes to distract you. I don't care what comes to offend you. I don't care what comes to get you off focus. Your assignment today, and I'm enlisting you into the army of God, that you understand that it is no longer church as usual. We don't come to sing two songs. We don't come to just do our two little songs, run through our songs. Come on, prophet. You're not called, you're called to change atmosphere. You're like artillery. When you come in, intercessors come in. And then all of a sudden, the worshipers come in. And the minstrels come in. And you begin to change the atmosphere so that every stony heart, every demon, every assignment from hell that come to distract formation now gets taken up by the destroyer. You gotta understand your assignment. Now look at yourself and say, I'm not regular. Come on, look at yourself, look at your name. Tell the person beside you, I know you thought I was a regular, uh, just a member of the church, but I'm not a regular. Come on, where the business owners at? Come on, where the business owners at? Come on. Let me tell you something. Your, your assignment is to finance the kingdom. So you gotta be so diligent in creating income and creating money so that you can be the person that writes the check. Come on. Because the United States Army and the Navy and the Marine and the forces overall have a treasury department. Come on, we have a treasury department. And they fund our efforts. Come on. So when we're ready to go to war, we need every bullet that we can use. We need every person that we need. And it becomes a sign, an allocation. And so I'm prophesying over your businesses. If you're a member of this church, you're assigned to this church, I prophesy that your business is getting ready to explode. Your money is getting ready to advance. It's getting ready to increase. You're going to have more than enough. And I pray for every creative DNA inside of everybody else. I prophesy to the precepts of your mind, to the DNA of your mind, you will no longer be broke another day in your life. Come on, everybody lift your hands. I prophesy in the name of Jesus that God is awakening every, every piece of DNA in your mind. You only probably use about 10% of your mind. But Father, I pray now in the name of Jesus that a creative anointing comes upon this church that causes them to have faith for their next level. Faith for suddenness, Father. I pray now for their businesses. I pray now for their assignments. I pray that everything inside them comes alive and comes awake today. And Father, let them be prosperous. Let them be powerful. Let them let every piece of passion inside of them. Let it come alive. Come on. Come on. So let's take about 30 seconds. Let's take about 30 seconds. I want every believer in the room. I want every believer in the room to just lift up your voices to the Lord. Begin to pray. Begin to prophesy. Begin to cry out to the Lord. Come on, begin to cry out to the Lord. Father, we cry out to you.
then they're gonna go all the way around, and then they're gonna come back up this thing. And by the time we get back up to here, we're gonna shout for the victory. Now the reason I put you two in here, because these are the men of war. And these are the prophets, the prophets are able to see. Prophets see, come on. You, you're able to worship, and the dancers are able to dance. Come on. And then we got, we, we, we got his real standing with him, because wherever he goes, she goes. And then we have men, and women of God, women of God, and men of God who protect them. Come on. And then we got some, we got some generals back here who understand warfare, who understand and have their back. So as we walk around this building, we're declaring that God is getting ready to expand our order. He's getting ready to expand our force. The general, amen, I believe that God, Apostle, calls all apostles to be generals in their region. And as you walk around, you're going to see a different vision for your city. You're going to see a different vision for your region. It's not just going to be on this street. God is calling you the first of the sons of God who literally take the reasons of this world and call them the kingdom of God to be expanded. So come on, let's move. Come on, begin to worship as you go. I understand my assignment. I understand my orders. 